How many of you have my book in English? So a good third, that's good. So the reason why I wrote the book is because the blockchain is not a very easy topic to understand. And some of us are starting to take it for granted, but it is not there yet. I think we're going to spend the next three years to really, really try to wrap our heads around the blockchain. In the same way that about 22 years ago, the web started in 95 officially. Because what came before, the, block, the web or the internet? Like a chicken and egg question here. The internet came first, right? Because the internet was the network of computers. And the internet was so technical that nobody could use it until they were engineers, and unless they knew how to connect computers together. It wasn't until 93 that Tim Berners-Lee came up with the web standards, which was really a bunch of standards to connect, not computers, but connect information on top of the computers. And that really started to open up the whole market for the World Wide Web, and anybody could get on it, on it without knowing how to connect computers together. And at that time, in 95, I had been working for Hewlett-Packard for uh, 14 years, and I saw that the internet and the web were going to be big enablers to re-engineer a lot of processes, a lot of companies. And I left HP at the time, and I said, I'm going to immerse myself with the internet and the web. And I wrote a book at the time called Opening Digital Markets, which was all about e-commerce and e-business. And the reason why I tell this story is because for a good three years, I spent my time doing what I'm doing right now, explaining the web and explaining the internet and explaining e-commerce and explaining e-business to people, to consumers and to companies. And now you might think, well, what do you mean you're explaining the web? We were born with the web. How many of you are under 35 here? Most of you. So for you, the web, when you started to become adults, it was like second nature. You were born with it. So you didn't think about it. Uh, but some of us, like me, uh, a bit older, we had to learn it a little bit. And some learned it faster than others. And some are still learning it and still don't, not sure what, uh, what we use it for. But uh, we're in the same, in the same uh, segment right now. 20 years later, uh, we have this new thing called the blockchain. And not everybody understands it. Not everybody accepts it. Not everybody believes in it. And the big companies, especially, they are very skeptical. And I remember, again, the analogy was the banks in 97, 96, 98, when they saw that now we can buy and sell things over the internet at the time that happened by putting a credit card on the, on the web, they did not like that. For three years, the banks were fighting putting payments on the internet. And I remember, I was there. We had to go through what was called payment gateways. So it was something like outside of the systems of the banking because they did not trust it. And we had to go through these gateways and pay more money and then it would connect to the banks, uh, not in real time. So the same thing is happening right now. The banks saw Bitcoin, saw blockchain, and they were saying, wow, what's this? We don't want it, we don't need it. And uh, they are fighting it. Or maybe some of them will say, well, we don't like all of it. Maybe we like only a part of it. We like the distributed ledger technology part of it, which is something they understand, which means instead of now having databases synchronize each other and taking days to do that, we're going to all be on the same page, on the same ledger. And the analogy I, I give is, it's like comparing Microsoft Word to Google Docs. So how many of you are using Microsoft Word in your business, in your jobs? Not a lot, maybe a third. I mean, that's getting a little bit archaic right now, to be honest. Because what happens when you want to share a Microsoft Word with somebody else and you have to make change, they have to make changes to it? While they are making the changes, you are in the dark. You don't know what's going on. You have to wait until the other person sends the changes back to you. And what if you have to 
do that with four other people, you have to wait for the next one and the next one and the next one. Com com contrast that to Google Docs, where the document is in the cloud. And um, the second that the changes are made, everybody is on the same page, and they see the changes right away. So the same thing kind of is the analogy of the blockchain when you think of the distributed ledger. It means instead of having three databases synchronized with each other with a delay, we only have one ledger. We have like one database that we all look at, and we always know the version of the truth as being one. And that is really the innovation of the blockchain. So the big companies said, oh, we like, we like the distributed ledger part. We don't like the cryptocurrency aspect of it because we have our own currencies. We have the euro, we have the dollar, we have the yen, and so on. So they said, yeah, this distributed ledger technology, that's something we can understand. It's like another potential catalyst for saving money, for improving processes, uh, for speeding up processes, so to make things faster uh, and cheaper for, for their internal processes. And big companies can keep busy for the next 10 years doing this. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying this in a negative manner. I'm just saying it is one segment of the activity that is going on. And there's a chapter in the book that talks about IT implementations if you're in a large company, uh, because there's a process behind it. And, and there's a lot of validity. Companies that are big keep want to uh, save money. But they're not gonna change their business. They're not gonna change their business model because of the blockchain, or at least very few of them will do that. Think about it, have, have the banks changed their models with the internet in the last 22 years? Not really. We do the banking very much the same way. I mean, the, the big innovation they gave us was we can now check our balances online. We can pay bills online. So we're licking less stamps. And uh, we can buy stocks online. But by and large, you still go to the bank. You still line up when you have to do uh, wire transfers unless you have a big bank account, uh, business account, and they'll let you do that. So they have not changed their business model. Everything ties back to their business model. And that is the issue that I see with the blockchain as well. For a big company, the starting point is a business model. So everything is going to tie into it. So it means everything is going to be limited. Whereas a startup, how many of you are in startups or working on a startup and want to be a startup? So maybe a quarter to a third. Startups, they start with how many customers? Zero. They have nothing to lose, they have everything to gain, and they want to conquer the world, they want to change everything, they want to disrupt everything, and they are more open to all these new innovations that the blockchain is bringing. So I see two sides of the activity. I see a side of activity that's from the enterprises, and there what they want to do, they want to improve things. They, want, they don't want to disrupt themselves. They want to improve themselves, save money, improve processes, and the other side is the startups where a lot of the activity is going on right now and there it's really where the innovation is happening that's where the new products are going to emerge that's where we're going to see the next amazon the next google the next facebook's are going to come from from startups it's not going to be a big company that's going to change their business model and and become something really cool and and very blockchain uh, related so Along with the uh, startup phenomena, one topic I want to talk about is the one that Alexandre mentioned is what's going on with startup that's very exciting. It's really at the heart of the blockchain because at the heart of the blockchain is about money. It's really a new form of money, the cryptocurrency. The novelty with the blockchain is that anyone, any company can create their own cryptocurrency. Bitcoin was created out of nothing. It started at 10 cents, and then it went to uh, 50 cents, went to a dollar. It started when Satoshi Nakamoto uh, started with one server in, in his or her bedroom, at least that's what the story is. And then they added a second server and a third server and so on. And then they, they started to, to generate Bitcoin. Ethereum, for example, which is the second largest cryptocurrency today and platform raised 18 million dollars two and a half almost three years ago in 2014 out of nothing 
so it was the crowd. It was a crowd sale, basically, that people, thousands of people like you, like me, anybody, participated in, in the crowd sale in the generation of this, this new currency that is now worth almost almost $10 billion. So if you had put in, uh, bought in 15, uh, in one ether for 15 cents uh, two and a half years ago, that ether is now worth close to $100. Uh, so that, that is an amazing uh, increase in, in terms of value. So all of the cryptocurrencies today combined are worth about, as of half an hour ago, $53 billion. Uh, so you might say, well, is this big or is this small? Well, it's not very big in the grand scheme of the financial markets. $53 billion is not a big number. Um, but it's it's a big number for a new market that is just starting. I remember when we only had 10 million users on the web. And, and I remember when we celebrated $1 million of e-commerce on the web. And it was a big thing. That was like 22 years ago. And But everything starts small until it's not small anymore. And suddenly we realize, wow, this is big. And we're in the same stages with the blockchain. So. In the same way as governments today issue currencies, companies in the future are going to issue and are issuing their own currency today. And that's what's giving birth to this new phenomena called the initial cryptocurrency offerings, where companies just say, well, we want to raise some money and we'll give a currency in exchange for uh, we can call them investments or participation or just other people, anybody helping them to realize their vision. And then they spend one or two or three years developing the products and going to the market. And there has been so much attention right now and, and uh, so much interest in the area of initial cryptocurrency offerings that it has become a, a very easy way to raise money. Uh, the traditional way to raise money was to talk to venture capitalists. And VC money is not easy to come. And if you were in the US, if you were in New York, if you were in Silicon Valley, you were privileged because there are lots of VCs in those areas. But if you lived in Lyon or in even Paris is not, doesn't have a lot of VCs, uh, or in other, country, in other cities, even Toronto where I come from is okay, but you're not as advantaged. Uh, but now, with the blockchain, you can be anywhere. You can be anywhere, and then you really compete on the global level from day one. And your investors can come from anywhere. And that's what, what's really interesting. There is a company in, in France that has done an ICO recently, and done a very successful one. Do any of you know who that company is? Exactly. IX. And where are they based? In Lyon. Exactly. They're not based in Paris and China, of course. You have to have another market. It's either a place here in China or in Singapore or in Switzerland. So yeah, there is a little bit of creativity that goes on from a legal perspective to create this kind of a organization that is needs to be safe from a legal and compliance perspective because you can't do it with the existing regulation. So you have to go to another entity that accepts these kinds of uh, uh, new structures. And Switzerland has been uh, friendly to it. Uh, Singapore has been friendly to it. Uh, Hong Kong, to some extent. Uh, I hear in Luxembourg they will be friendly to it. And there will be pockets and areas where some... Uh, jurisdictions are seeing what's going on and saying, yeah, we want to attract companies and let them uh, incorporate uh, their uh, organizations where we are. And that's a way to attract them. Uh, I think another one is Estonia as well, Our friend is friendly to these kinds of uh, new organizations. Another way of doing this is by having a foundation. So the idea you say, well, the foundation is a nonprofit organization. This is how Ethereum is, is uh, uh, has been created. Uh, the foundation is a nonprofit, and all they do is take care of the protocol. So there is part of this technology that is coming up. It's not just applications. It could be a protocol that 
is an enabling technology to write applications. So especially that it's open source. So the foundation starts to then work on uh, encouraging the open source development of the software technologies. And there's a lot of activity there doing all kinds of new layers of protocols, uh, like cloud computing, file storage, uh, e-commerce, every segment that you can think about. Now, there's going to be a version uh, of it on the blockchain. And this brings me to the other the big theme of the blockchain, which is decentralization. Decentralization. So if you're doing something on the blockchain, the reason why we have the blockchain is, among other things, two, two main reasons is decentralization and peer-to-peer. -peer. That is really the innovation of the blockchain. I mean, we've had peer-to-peer -peer for a long time. We've had peer-to-peer -peer in 1999, 2000, 2001 with uh, Napster and file sharing and BitTorrent. How many of you have used or use BitTorrent and admit to it? Yes. And you know, you're not doing anything legal, you know that, right? But it's being done, and we uh, can get music, we can get videos. Uh, even my book is available on BitTorrent if you want to steal it and download it. It's possible. Not too many people do it, but everything just about is available there. But just as a footnote, so file sharing was already existing in the in the peer-to-peer -peer sense, but not with money attached to it. So the innovation of the blockchain came in with cryptocurrency, with money, and peer-to-peer -peer is, is very interesting because now the infrastructure is in the users themselves. The users are the infrastructure and the computers are the infrastructure as well. So Bitcoin has, what's the latest number now? Um, close to 6,000 servers run the Bitcoin network. Uh, how many servers run the Ethereum network? Anybody knows how many? So it's about 12,800, something like that. And the number keeps going up. But this is a new infrastructure. That's what's going on right now. There's a new layer of cloud computing, um, a new layer of peer-to-peer -peer computers, we, we call it. And, and the users are, are sometimes part of it. Uh, in the current web paradigm, there's something called uh, user-generated content. And when you all go on Facebook, what do you do? You write content. So that is called user-generated content. And then Facebook makes money on your content. And they make money on your attention. The average person spends one hour a day on Facebook. And, and some people spend more, obviously. And what does Facebook give us back in return? Nothing. They just take your attention, they take your content, and they monetize it by putting advertising on it. What if there was a model where you can still do the same thing, but you get compensated? A company gives you cryptocurrency that is worth something. So there are such models currently being worked on. You can go on Steemit, steemit.com, and if you write something, you can, and others like it, others uh, write comments on it, you can earn Steam cryptocurrency, which is worth real uh, dollars, real euros. And, and that's the new model of the future. So in the future, the, in the same way that we had user-generated content, we're going to have user-generated work. Because our work, whether it's passive or active work, is worth something. If it's our attention, it's worth something. And some companies will give it to us, will give us something back. A second area in that sector is data. We all have data about us, about who we are, where we live, where we go, what we do. All of this is valuable data, but nobody's giving us anything back if we are sharing our data. And we share our data whether we want it or not, sometimes voluntarily, sometimes involuntarily, with companies on the web and otherwise, with the retailers we are we have relationships with, but nobody gives us any of that data. But uh, they give us any, any uh, value back. Uh, so what if you give some data, but then you return something, they give you back something more valuable? Uh, and that could be something that is also being worked on today on the blockchain. Another one is something we own and we can share. What if you could share a part of your uh, 
uh, drive here. You have a PC and you're not using it all the time. What if you can share your storage or your uh, computing cycles when you're not using it? And somebody can give you coins for that. And it, it becomes a new economy of sorts where you're earning and you're spending. And that's really the blockchain economy that I have been talking about. In the same way that the web economy happened to us 22 years ago, and now the web economy is worth more than a trillion dollars, 1.3, 1.4 trillion dollars. Today, the blockchain economy is small. Uh, maybe it's 53 in terms of uh, cryptocurrencies and the com combination of all of the other companies, maybe pushing it by another 20, maybe it's 70 billion. It's still not a big number, and there's not lots of transactions going on right now. But this is exactly how the web started. So I can predict to you for sure, in the next few years, the blockchain economy is going to be the one to watch for. And there's going to be a lot of transactions. Just about everything can go on the blockchain now. Uh, sharing-wise, uh, getting value, earning and spending uh, and from the consumer end and from big companies, a lot of these financial assets are going to be traded on the blockchain. So my prediction is that this is only the beginning and we will soon be talking about the blockchain economy in the same way as we are talking about the web economy today. Thank you.